Hello everybody, I'm Chris Provost and you're watching Park Pass. And today, I'm at Disneyland. I've been reviewing the secrets of each land. Now I did a video a while ago where I did the best secret of each land here at Disneyland and you guys really liked that video. So today I'm doing part two where I do the best secret of each land. Let's do this. Oh, and by the way, hit the subscribe button, like button. Let's just get that out of the way right now. Let's do this. Let's reveal the best secret of each land, starting in Main Street. I love Main Street. I think it's so, it just, the second you walk in, it feels, you hear the music, the ambiance, the people, the, I love it all. I don't mind the crowds, I don't mind, I don't mind, I just think it's so great to come in here and be part of Disneyland. Makes me happy every time. All right, so let's do the best secret here on Main Street, something that uh, is really cool, but I'm gonna give you a little bit of a warning. If you come during the holiday season, you will not be able to see it because they removed this secret from November to December. Uh, man, I remember as a little kid just walking down Main Street, the energy was just like, ah! I was just shaking, so I was so excited. And I remember one time we came with my cousin, and he and I, it was like one of the first times they let us kind of run around by ourselves. And we were like 12 or so, and oh, man, we felt like so grown up. We got to run around and ride rides by ourselves. I loved it. It's good memories. I think that's what makes Disney so fun for people. There's all these amazing memories to come up with. All right, now let me show you the best secret here in Main Street. Gorgeous day here at Disneyland. It's not too hot, but it's warm enough that you feel you feel good. All right, so we're gonna walk right here and to see this amazing secret, we're gonna have to look over here at the okay. Penny Arcade. Oh, I love these guys. <laughs> Are you looking good, Steve? All right, so we're coming over here and you wanna look at this Penny Arcade. Now, right up in the center of the Penny Arcade, there is a penny. And the penny is from the year 1901. Why do they have a penny from 1901? Well, that's because that was the year that Walt Disney was born. Now, during the holidays, they're gonna take that penny off right there, and they're gonna have some cables go across, and they'll put some wreaths, some holiday wreaths. So if you come down here during November or uh, uh, December, you won't be able to see that penny. But the rest of the time, that penny is around there. That penny is representing uh, Walt Disney, one of the best secrets here on Main Street. All right, now let's go into Tomorrowland. All right, so we're gonna go into Tomorrowland and do a secret here. This secret's a little more well known, but something you should kind of be aware of if you are a Disney fan. Now, when Walt was designing Disneyland, and it was on opening day in 1955. Tomorrowland was supposed to represent the year 1984. Three, and that would seem so far in the future. It's like 29 years in the future. Everybody's like, oh, I'll never get here. They'll never get here. Anyways, one of the things that Walt thought, he envisioned, he envisioned that by the time we got to 1984, that we would be, people would be self-sustaining on their own food. That we'd be eating healthy and growing all of our own food. That was his vision for the future. He kind of missed on that one. But uh, because of that, he had certain parameters for uh, Tomorrowland. Here is all the greenery here in Tomorrowland. You see all these different flowers? Every flower in Tomorrowland is edible. Uh, you can eat it. It's not a problem at all. You can eat anything you want here, these <laughs> plants in Tomorrowland, because Walt thought that we'd be growing all of our own food, so all the flowers in Tomorrowland are edible. I think that's so awesome that Walt's like, you know in the future, everybody's gonna be super responsible of growing their own food. <laughs> He had a lot more faith in humanity, I think, than a lot of people did. Anyways, yeah, all the all the plants here in Tomorrowland are edible. Here's some more plants, all edible, 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 edible. Right up there, Star Tours. All right, for the next area, we're gonna go into Fantasyland to do a secret there. But I do want, I'm gonna do a little bit of history about Tomorrowland because um, I think it's interesting to talk about. So, Tomorrowland was the least developed land on opening day for Disneyland, and. A couple months before it opened, they told them, they're like, hey, we can't, we're not gonna be able to open up Disneyland with Tomorrowland, you have to scrap it. And so Walt kind of reluctantly agreed to that. Walt reluctantly, reluctantly agreed to not having Tomorrowland on opening day. But then after a little while, he just was like, that's not my vision, we have to do it. I don't care if it's just very sparse, we are opening up Tomorrowland. Oh, by the way, look, there's more plants here. Yeah, all edible. So fun, Tomorrowland. So, on opening day of Disneyland, Tomorrowland was the least developed land. In fact, they had a bunch of trees and plants that they hadn't even had time to pull out. They were, they were gonna pull them out and do some little landscaping. So do you know what the Imagineers did? They literally just printed off Latin names and put them on a little, in front of the trees and said, this tree is, so people are walking by like, ooh, and they thought it was really cool. 
when it all it was is because they hadn't had a chance to landscape anything. Yeah. <laughs> I know I love that though. All right, for our next deep secret, we're gonna do fantasy land. Now this is an interesting one because it really has to do with Tomorrowland, but it's located in Fantasyland. So you guys tell me if it's a Tomorrowland secret or a Fantasyland secret. There's the beautiful Matterhorn. But I kind of feel like once we walk around here, we are now in Fantasyland. See like the nice little submarines right back there? So here we go. Now, what attraction is right there? Finding Nemo. It's important to understand, we're trying to find Nemo. Nemo is lost. You go on the submarine adventure, you're trying to find Nemo. Keep that in mind when you look at this next secret. There it is. You see Hank out there? An octopus. So technically, I guess this is like fantasy land, but they got cars over there, so it really does tomorrow land. But we're gonna just keep walking along, keep going down here. I'm gonna show you a really cool secret here at Fantasyland that very few people know. And it has to do with Finding Nemo. All right, so here we are right across from the Matterhorn. There's the Edelweiss Snacks. Oh, hello. Okay, so here's the Matterhorn. We're coming all the way over here. And right here, if you look at this wood plank, what do you see? That is Nemo. Do you see Nemo hidden in the wood right there? A little fish right there? What is Nemo doing out here? Because we're finding Nemo. But Nemo is supposed to be in Tomorrowland, but he's here in Fantasyland. On the wood plank, you guys can see Nemo the fish here in Fantasyland. Isn't that a, isn't that a crazy secret? I mean, the Nemo fish is here in Fantasyland, but it's really part of Tomorrowland. I'm not exactly sure. Anyways, now we have to go into Toontown, so I can show you the best secret located in Toontown. And I don't feel like that that was a cheating because some of you are like, well, that's maybe part of you did two secrets for Tomorrowland. That's not Fantasyland. I'm not sure. So if, that's, if that is part of Tomorrowland, I mean, it could be, I can see the argument going both ways. But now let's head into Toontown. All right, we are now going to walk into Toontown and find out this another amazing secret. All right, so here we are in Toontown. This land is so crazy and fun. I just love it. You know, they make sure there's no straight lines on any of the buildings. They just wanna have a lot of fun with it. It's really cool. But what I'm, the next secret I'm about to show you is not like the deepest secret, but it's something little kids are just absolutely going to love. Oh, right there, do you see that window right there? It's already showing you. There is a little puppy that'll pop up here in the fire department. And in order to get that puppy to pop up, what you have to do is you have to push that little red button right there. If you do that, the puppy will pop up. And a lot, and you'll hear it bark, and a lot of times people will walk in, they'll push this button, and they just continue to walk inside the fire department, and they don't see the puppy. So there I am, pushing the puppy button. And there he is, he just popped right up. Cute little puppy. Little kids love that. So the next time you're here in Toontown, tell you, have your little kids stand up there and push the button, that way they can see the puppy come up. Then once you show them how to do that, then they're gonna wanna push that button all the time and have the puppy come up. <laughs> Why not? Speaking of uh, puppies and dogs, do you know what kind of construction dogs are the best at? Roofing. Roughing? Did that joke work? Dogs are best at doing roofing. Roofing. <laughs> R-O-O-F. Roof. Roof. Roofing. <laughs> All right, so now we've done uh, uh, Fantasyland. We did Toontown. Now we're gonna go into, we're gonna go right now into um, Fantasyland again. I'm gonna walk through it and then go into Frontierland, walk through that and go into Batu. Galaxy's Edge. Let's go do that. Secrets there in Batu. Walking into the heart of Fantasyland. One of the greatest things is, I did a video once about the flags and the shields on uh, King Arthur's carousel. And they had the wrong flag over the wrong shield. And I uh, showed that in a video. And lo and behold, Disney changed the flag after that video came out. I think that's my greatest accomplishment, guys. A lot of history in those flags and shields. All right, we're now leaving Fantasyland, entering into Frontierland. But this is just the quickest way for me to get into Batu. We're we'll turning right here and go right into Batu. All right, we're now entering into Batu. I love the transition. Walking in here, the music sounds, all of it. You see the wood ties, and then all of a sudden transitions into Batu. An amazing transition. What is your favorite Star Wars movie? 
Uh, put it down in the comments down below. It's interesting. Um, the way Disney thinks about it is they think the newest ones are always people going to be people's favorites. And that hasn't been my case. I think that people, the ones that they get hooked on Star Wars are the ones that they remember the most and love the most. My favorite is Empire Strikes Back. I love Empire. I think Empire is amazing. And, uh, but I didn't like it so much the first time I saw it. The first time I saw it, it scared the heck out of me because of Han Solo and all that stuff happening. But now I've gotten older, I just I love it. It's so good. I love that one. And also would turn Jedi. The original trilogy are just so good to me. But put it down below. I'm curious, what is your favorite Star Wars movie? I was able to attend a, in 2019 a panel about uh, uh, a D23, all about Batuu. It is the most comprehensive sound engineered land. The sounds it has, has, you have animals, you have different languages. And during the times of day, those sounds will change. At nighttime, it really comes to life with all the sounds at nighttime. All right, so let me show you something here that I think is absolutely amazing. All right, if you look straight ahead, you can see it's like docking bay seven. And on top of it, you see a spaceship. And it's got three crates. One of the crates says 1977, one says 1980, and one says 1983. Those were the years the original trilogy came out. 1977, Star Wars came out. 1980 is when uh, Empire Strikes Back came out. And 1983 is when uh, Return of the Jedi came out. Now something kind of interesting about that ship, you see the, the, the tail of it, is you can see that, like when you do the smuggler's run, sometimes you can see that ship parked there. And sometimes when you do star tours, you'll be able to see that ship flying in when it lands here in Batu. So yeah, you can see it flying around. That's really cool. I love that they have a homage to the original trilogy here. There they are. That is affirmative. Oh, okay. Storm <laughs> so they walk on by. I love them. If I could be any character actor, I would love to be a stormtrooper and walk around. It's so cool. I love stormtroopers. I have a strong affinity for stormtroopers anyways, but I love them. Here's what I'm going to say. And this is not a dig or anything. I just wish, this is just my thoughts. I'm not trying to be negative. I'm not trying to say I don't appreciate what we have, because I do. Disney here in Batu, they have the timeline set, right? It's set after, was it Rise of Skywalker, the last film or whatever, right around that time frame. I always say we just kind of get rid of the time frame here. I don't care. I don't think people care about the time frame as much as everybody thinks they do. I want to see Darth Vader walking around. Can you imagine walking here and seeing Darth Vader? Would you just lose your mind? Like, they have Boba Fett every once in a while, so I think they're getting a little bit away from the timeline, but we need Darth Vader. Let's get Darth Vader here and just be awesome to have Darth Vader. Yoda, I want to see Yoda. I'm sure we, I mean, we got Grogu. Let's get Yoda here. We need the Yoda. Uh, Lando Calrissian walking around. Han Solo, a Luke Skywalker, Princess Leia. People would lose their minds. Just, that's my wish. Am I wrong? If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Uh, just let me know. <laughs> I could be wrong. Maybe everybody's like, Chris, you're way off base. Can I also say this? If I had my magic wand and I could create anything I wanted here, Hi. I sometimes get distracted. What I think I was saying is if I could had a magic wand and I could do anything here, you know what I do here in Batu? Do you know what I want to do more than anything? I think it's what everyone wants. I want to ride on a speeder bike. And there's a lot of property here, tons of property. And I think what they need to do is just make a track. They just go, kind of goes up and down. Does that have to be up big hills and up and down and have two speeder bikes side by side. So you get on it and you like sit there. So I'm sitting there and you let, let us move the knobs on the little speeder bike and have it go with all those sounds and have us go through trees and around corners, banking around corners. It doesn't even have to be that long. Oh, could you guys imagine that? Little side by side speeder bikes. So fun. I mean, that would be like a dream come true. I would love that. So anyways, Hi. there they go guys. Canoes, I love them so much. <laughs> they don't even know what they're getting into. They're just like, they're like, over there. Ready, set, go! <laughs> Woo <-hoo! laughs> they have so much fun. The, the canoes guides are the best. They have such great personalities. They're so fun with everybody. Just having a good time. And just, I love it so much. Oh. Here they. 
Here they come again. Look, this is the this is the part right here where you're having fun and you haven't you don't realize what you're doing. And then right now you're like, wait a minute. We are we are now paddling. It's so fun. I love to take my friends on it the first time because they have no idea. They're like, oh, this is, they think it's going to be a motorized. And you're like, no, 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 you got to paddle that bad boy. All right, so let's go do a secret now in Critter Country. Go to Critter Country and do one of the best secrets in Critter Country. All right, so here we are coming into Critter Country. I want to talk about my friend Jeff for a second. Um, if you guys watched when I went to Halloween Horror Nights, Jeff was with me in Halloween Horror Nights. Anyways, um, he went to a Disney auction where they, they auctioned off things, right? And they had this giant poster of the Country Bear Jamborees. Remember Winnie the Pooh, it's important. Country Bear Jamborees. And that poster was hung in uh, Walt Disney World, and then they brought it over to Disneyland, and it was hung actually, they used that poster here at Disneyland. He went to the auction and he bid on that poster, and he was the only one to bid on the poster, and he won it. And now it's hanging above his fireplace in his house. It's so cool. Anyways, Professor Andrew, if you're watching, <laughs> sucker, he's got it. So anyways, Here's what you talk about, Winnie the Pooh. Okay, so when you're riding Winnie the Pooh, the ride ends because it's Winnie the Pooh's birthday. They have this big party and it's like, you know, you're going through the very end, the doors are opening up and they're giving them presents, right? For Winnie the Pooh's birthday. Well, the exit goes right here and the exit's right by Pooh Corner. This is one of the few times where the attraction continues into the store. When you go in the store, they're still having the birthday party for Winnie the Pooh. Most people don't know that because you gotta look up. Let me show you. All right, so that's where the ride comes out. We're having the birthday party. This is Pooh Corner. You're gonna walk in here and they're continuing on with the birthday party. Look at this. So you see all these things? Cheers for Pooh. Happy birthday to Pooh. And it says, I love Pooh right there. These are all big banners. You see all the balloons around the store right there and their presents, see their presents right there. Right, the presents right there and balloons because this is Winnie the Pooh's birthday. Hip, hip, hooray. So the ride actually continues here. So we are still, this is all these treats in here. This is for Winnie the Pooh's birthday. Party for Pooh. Yeah, that's right. The Winnie the Pooh party, birthday party continues on Pooh's corner. Most people don't notice because you're so fixated on getting that amazing Tigger tail, that treat, the marshmallows, all of it, that you don't look up because you're just looking ahead like, oh, I want that marshmallow Tigger tail. It's so good, love it. All right, now we're gonna go into New Orleans Square and I'm going to show you my very favorite, my very favorite detail about New Orleans Square. When I first started uh, Pearl's Park Pass, uh, our channel's a lot smaller. I was walking along one day and uh, one of the uh, head custodians for the whole park, he stopped and was talking to us and he was kind of a fan of the channel and he's like, I gotta tell you about these fire insurance plaques in New Orleans Square. And he's the one that told me this information. It's one of the first secrets I really learned about Disney. I loved it. It's my favorite, it's one of my favorite things here. So now I'm gonna show you the fire insurance plaques in New Orleans Square. All right, before we get into New Orleans Square, I'm gonna say this. I've done, this is the second time I've done this in. If you want me to do DCA, uh, like seek the best secrets of each land in DCA, I only like to do videos if you really like it. So put down below, put uh, show DCA some love, show DCA some love. If I get uh, enough of those comments, I will then do a uh, secret reveal for each land in DCA. If there's enough interest, show DCA some love. That stands for Disney California Adventure. Show DCA some love. You get enough of those comments down below, then I will do it in that land as well, that whole park. New Orleans Square is a very popular land. It's perfectly themed. The food here is amazing. Uh, the, uh, the, the rides and attractions are wonderful here. There's really nothing wrong with it other than it gets crowded, but even that I can handle. This is, they have some amazing food. They got Tiana's Palace up here. Uh, I was lucky enough to go see that uh, right before it opened. And I have to tell you, oh, that food was some of the best food I've ever had in Disneyland. They're shrimp grits. Right there. All right, so let me tell you about the fire insurance plaques. I told, in the last one I did here, I showed you how Walt Disney went down and he got uh, the plaque and they put it above the, the drinking fountain. Well, back in the day in New Orleans, uh, in Louisiana, they had fire insurance. You buy fire insurance and you put the plaque on your house. And then if there's ever a fire, the firemen would come to your house and they look, if, they, if you had that plaque, they would then try to put that fire out as fast as they could. If they ever got to your house though and you didn't have that plaque, they kind of like, well, it didn't really work as hard to try to put that fire out. So 
there's these different plaques from New Orleans Square. Walt bought six of them, and six of them are now put up in the buildings here in New Orleans Square for fire insurance. Let me show them to you. And they're up high, most people don't know, so you have to look for them. I'll try to show you all six of them. Let's do this. All right, so the first fire insurance plaque I'm gonna show you is right above this lamp right here. That is it right there, there's one right there. The second fire insurance plaque is right over there. Right there. We're walking back here. There's the train station. And the third fire insurance plaque is right there. All right, now we gotta go back this way. All right, there's a fourth one right there. It's right across from Pieces of Eight. Fourth one right over there. Okay, so number five is right outside the Pieces of Eight. It's right there. And I have to go back. It's right by Edora's Chic Boutique. Right there is a sixth. And there you go, the six fire plaques of New Orleans Square. All right, now I'll show you those fire plaques. By the way, if you come to Disneyland and you take a picture of those fire plaques, be sure to follow us on Instagram, Provost Park Pass, and tag us. And then that way we can share your fire plaque pictures because they're so amazing. All right, now let's go into uh, Adventureland. Adventureland! Of course, Adventureland is the smallest land in all of Disneyland. It's a little more crowded, but the ambiance is absolutely amazing. Look at this. This is awesome. Love it. All right, so I'm gonna show you a little, little secret here. It's for Jungle Cruise. Right as you come inside here in Adventureland, right as you walk by, most of you walk right by this, it shows a map. This is a map of everything that you are about to do on the cruise. You see, you go down there, you go around the Irrawaddy River, come around by the Elephant Bathing Pool. They got the Ganges River, you go down the Congo River. That's where the falls are. Then you end up in the Nile River, moving all the way down here near the Zambese River, then you end up in the Amazon River, and then you come all the way back. This is a chart of everything you're gonna do in uh, Jungle Land, the Jungle Adventure. Jungle Cruise. <laughs> it's an amazing piece of art that most people just walk by, um, and I love it. It's so good, I wish, you, I, wish uh, I wish I could have that somewhere framed in my house. I love it so much. Yeah, there's a lot, they, when you go on the Jungle Cruise, those are all different rivers. You know what I like to do? I like to throw coins in the rivers because I enjoy watching cash flow. <laughs> no? All right. All right, now we're walking into Frontierland, guys. I love this land. I have a, I don't know why. It's just, this is the land I remember the most as a kid, I think, for some reason. I just always have loved it. My mom was a school teacher and she taught fourth grade. And she taught this thing. She did like this mountain man expedition. She got that going in her school district. and. And like kids, if they get enough points, and you know, had to do extra points, they got enough points, they got little tickets. And then they should do what was called the Mountain Man Rendezvous. You'd have actual mountain men come and they would um, have these activities. And you'd turn their tickets to do activities. And one of the things, and I would go and help her with these things. And one of the things that she talked about is how cowboys, back in the day, a lot of them were literate. They didn't know how to read. But so when they come into town, they didn't know where to go shopping. So what they would do is the general store would put antlers on top of the roof. If there's an antler on the roof, that signified to a cowboy, hey, you can come in and shop for goods and wares in this particular area. By the way, I told this, this uh, fact a long time ago. And I did call them antlers, they called them horns. Everybody's like, they're not horns, they're antlers. So let me show you the antlers on the roof. Okay, right there is Frontierland. And you look right on the roof, what do you see? You see antlers. By the way, they're not called horns, they're called antlers. That lets you know, that would let a cowboy know, hey, you come shop here to get your wares at a general store. How cool is that? All right, I gotta go find a little spot here so I can talk to you guys. Hang on, let me find a little spot to be quiet. Except my, my mind runs around super fast. I get, I'm very excitable and get distracted, so I need to find a place where I can just uh, focus. Okay, I want you to know that I am talking to you. And yes, I am talking to you. And you might be thinking to yourself, you can't be talking to me. If you think that, stop whatever you're doing and listen to this message, because this is for you. I want you to know that you are amazing. Did you know that? You make the world a better place. I hope you know that. And if you don't know that, listen to what I'm saying. The world is better because you are part of the world. You bring an amazing energy. You bring all this awesomeness. Hi, how are you? You make the world amazing. And if you ever get sad, confused, or you feel lost, 
Come back here to Pearl's Park Pass and watch a video and know that I am your friend, I am your buddy, and I think you are awesome. I didn't mean it. You make the world better. Don't ever give up. And if you're in, a, if you're going through a hard time right now and it's feeling a little sad, you're feeling a little depressed, I promise you it does get better. I know I've been there my, myself where you're going through some depression, sad times, and you just think it's gonna be like that forever. It doesn't. It ends. It gets better. And I want you to know that you are awesome. All right, let's get to you on the video. All right, so let's see here. Wait a minute. Did you hear that like button? You did? Oh, okay, good. Let's get to you on. <laughs> oh, right back at you. Oh! <laughs> Thank you, Queen of Hearts. You're, oh, you like the tie? Thank you so much. I'm dressing up for you because you're so special. Yes, yeah, all for you. <laughs> bye bye. Bye, Queen. And that's what just makes Disney so special. By the way, if you're thinking about coming down to Disney, it's easy. Yeah, click the link down below. Uh, if you click that link, you're gonna get the best tickets on your tickets to come to Disneyland and on your hotels. Stay on a Disney resort or a good neighbor hotel, you're gonna get the best rates. Or if you prefer, you can just call 1-855-GETAWAY. That's 1-855-GETAWAY. And when they answer the phone, be sure to tell them, be sure to tell them that Provost Park is fast at you. Hi guys. And um, tell them Provost Park Pass sent you and you'll get the best rates. And their, their customer service is absolutely amazing. It's who we use. I came down here, I'm staying right now at the Castle Inn and Suites and I booked it through Getaway today. It's like literally what I did because I wanted to get the best rates. You guys are amazing, have a fantastic day. I hope you know you're awesome. And like, I'll, if, you, if I get enough comments, I'll do a, a part one of the best secrets in each land at Disney California Adventure. Hope you guys enjoy this video. Hit the like and subscribe. Talk to you later, bye-bye showed you some secrets of Disneyland lands. Boom, 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 ba, da, 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 da. What one was your favorite? Da, 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 da. Was it the antlers? Don't call them horns. People make fun of you if you call them horns. They're called antlers. I like the map of Jurassic, uh, well, Jungle Cruise, but hey. <laughs>